How's it, everyone? I am Kevin Dutrois, and welcome to today's episode on Stoicism or being Stoic. This definitely is a fantastic, fascinating subject. And as we begin, here's a table of contents. There's 11 principles. And I'm going to briefly break them down. And of course, we can go into in-depth after this. I just want to give an overall good view of what they look like. The first principle is control what you can, accept what you can't. The second is the power of perception. Three, very important, emotional mastery. Four, living according to nature. And number five, the dichotomy of control. Number six, memento mori. Number seven, amor fati. And number eight, virtue is the highest good. Number nine, premeditation of evils. Number 10, logos. And number 11, tranquility through detachment. Okay, so what is Stoicism? It originated in ancient Greece around 300 BCE. It was founded in Athens by Zeno of Kittium a philosopher from Cyprus who began teaching in the public space called the Stoa Pekail, meaning painted porch, which is where the philosophy gets its name. Stoicism became one of the most influential schools of thought in the Hellenistic world and later flourished in Rome, where the Roman Stoic philosophers such as Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius, one of my favorites, his meditations book is amazing. These figures helped shape Stoicism into a practical philosophy focused on ethics, emotions, and the pursuit of virtue. The word Stoic, it's the most shocking truth of Stoicism. Now I'm repeating this because I want you to pay attention to this. I want you to write this down when I'm done. What if I told you that controlling your emotions is the key to true freedom? And most of us do it wrong. So write this down. And I want you to answer this after the fact, after we've done the session. What is my big why? Write that down. Don't, don't answer it now. Just what if I told you that controlling your emotions is the key to true freedom? And most of us do it wrong. Okay, principle one, control what you can, accept what you can't. So control versus acceptance. The Stoics taught that we must focus on what is in with our control and let go of everything else. So within those two circles, you've got the control on the one side, acceptance on the other side. So control is what is internal within. Acceptance is your environment, okay? And in the middle is that balance, that small circle that says control. That's what you control. That little universe right there is what you control. Everything else is literally, it's, it's, it's unknown. Nobody has a crystal ball. Principle number two, the power of perception. How you see things or interpret things is different to the way how I see things, I interpret things. How your partner sees things, interpret things is different to the way you do. So it's not what happens to you. It's how you interpret it that counts. The Stoics knew that perception is everything. So look at this picture over here with this guy holding up two different pairs of glasses. Well, it's the same glasses, okay? Each showing a different view, the perspective, symbolizing how perceptions shapes reality in Stoic philosophy. Principle number three, emotional mastery. If you can take authority over your emotions, if you can literally control your emotional responses, you will control your destiny. Because emotions are not just uncontrollable forces. The Stoics believe you can choose how to feel in any situation. So look at this Stoic graph with all these different temperaments. Emotional spectrum with Stoic calm at the center, okay, balanced, representing the balancing state and amidst emotional extremes you always want to enjoy your experiences enjoy the journey principle number four living according to nature align with nature so living according to nature means understanding your role in the world and accepting the natural order of things so look at this river 
as it flows down, there's rocks in the way, there's pebbles, there's stones. It just flows over or around them. There's embankments on each side, right? Embankments bank as a currency flows to the banks. We'll talk about that later. Look how it flows. So you want to flow through life. You just want to, if obstacles get in your way, just flow over them. Find a solution. Principle number five, the dichotomy of control. Know what you can change and what you cannot. This simple realization is central to stoic peace of mind. So in life, there are maybe 20 to 10% of what you can control. The other 80 to 90% is out of control. It's how you flow in that and what you can control. You don't have a crystal ball. You don't know what the outcome is. However, you have hope and you have a positive mindset to get in the direction you want to get to acquire and be attainable and available to positive outcomes and positive people and positive opportunities. Everything else outside of that just accepted, so be it and move on. Principle number six, remember you will die. Time is the most valuable asset you own. You don't control the last breath that you have. You don't control when the sun rises or when the sun sets or the cycles of the moon. It's all by design, by a master plan, by master the master of the universe. It's the most valuable thing you own. So every second, every minute, every hour of the day, just enjoy it to its fullest. Pay close attention to what you're absorbing your time into and your effort because you want to maximize on every opportunity you get. I'm talking the positive ones. The negative ones, ignore those and move on. So time is your best friend. It's sacred. And make it that way. Now, principle number seven means everything that happens, even the painful, unexpected, embrace all aspects of life. We've all been through pain. We've all been through trauma. We've all been through breakup and 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 hurt and pain. We've all lost somebody. That's just a cycle of life. Try and look at the good in it and take that away, so that you have good, positive memories about all that trauma that you experienced. If you need help, go see a therapist. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. Get some inner child work done or some imagery or some self-hypnosis work done to really help you. Try and look at the positive side of life so that you can enjoy the rest of it because you're still watching this, right? So that's a good sign. This is one of my favorites, possibly my favorite. The fourth, the the four pillars, they're called, the. this is principle number eight, The virtue is the highest good. The Stoics ideal of virtue. So there's four, they call the four pillars, okay, of virtue is um, cultivating wisdom, one, courage, number two, justice, number three, and temperance, number four. And over here, this is it. Uh, When it comes to wisdom, okay, you have good decision making because you've got the knowledge and intelligence because you're about self-mastery. The symbol for this is normally a book or an owl. Courage, stand your ground, stand tall, protect your castle, protect your mind. Feed it positive, healthy, good things, okay? And normally the symbol for this is a lion or a shield. And then the third pillar of virtue is justice. Fairness in everything. Treat others with respect. How you treat others, they'll treat you. How you attract is how you're going to, if you attract positive, you're going to attract positive. If you attract negative, you're going to get negative. And the symbol for justice is normally the the scale, the weighing scales, right? Uh, Represent balance and fairness. And then the fourth one is temperance. It's self-control. When you can control your emotions, your responses, take responsibility for actions, now you're in control. You're just going to have exponential vertical growth. Boom, you're just going to take off. These are so important. And together, these virtues, even though they're ancient, in modern times, they'll make you a much better person. And every day will be better for you. Principle number nine, premeditation of evils. What this is, is it's really preparing for the worst. So you have between 40 to 60,000 thoughts in a day. So your mind's like a ping pong ball. However, you, you have what you got to take, what's your to-do list. You've got to take action on what's a priority right now. So you'll isolate those thoughts or those different programming processes that you need to take care of. And Stoics practice pre-meditation of evil where they imagine worst case scenarios to build resilience so always plan ahead think 20 steps ahead don't think about right now and because you're in a trauma situation what does this look like at the outcome so look at the goal and then reverse psychology that 
Principle number 10, Logos, the rational universe. The universe is perfect. We are not perfect. We are excellent. We are brilliant human beings, but we are not perfect. If, we, if the universe is off by 1%, can you imagine where trillions of miles away, the universe would be chaos, it would be mayhem. I believe there's a master of the universe. I believe there's a prime source that even downloads information to us when we need it, especially through prayer meditation. And our God is, our God is perfect. He's just magnificent. Our 11th principle is tranquility through detachment. Detaching from external desires and outcomes. Desire for luxury lifestyle. I have it all, guys. I have it. I have those human behaviors, those traits. Like Stoics found inner tranquility. When I started to meditate and I found inner peace, when I went within, it was blissful. It was wonderful. Practice meditation. Godly meditation. I want to end with this. Start applying the historic principles today to gain control over your emotions, perceptions, and life. Take control over your responses because they're automatic. They're on autopilot most of the time. It is 95% of the day. Pay attention to your thoughts. Pay attention to your behaviors. Pay attention to how you take responsibility for your actions. In conclusion, subscribe, like, heart this for me. You'll help the algorithm. You'll really help me get ahead. I really want to share so many wonderful, magical things with you. This is Kevin Dutois, and cheers.